segment of uh, Big Bang Theory Big Bang Theory RL's uh, BTS log yep let me give you a time and date stamp it is 1 hour and 39 minutes into the day of Monday September 19th 2016 and I can look at, at, at this at this because my hands are free here's my phone <laughs> yeah the new system is working out great just well you know just what I wanted and uh, I can show you my new office bag it fits all my electronics, and the thing is, is that, you know, looks can be deceiving, but for 10 bucks, you know, if it fits your entire office in here, and you nice have a now, you now have a nice portable office, that means you can do more work in more places, so, well, here it is, here's the bag reveal, alright, yeah, yeah, it's a nice little Barbie bag, uh, it was uh, on clearance for $10, and considering that the, the Targus bag for laptops and stuff like that to carry it around and everything, is well over a hundred dollars ten bucks for a nice bag that's that, that's that's small enough so you can carry it around like with in your hand uh it's got nice backpack straps uh is durable uh, i got side pockets for my phone um what else do i have in here my wallet and keys are in the other side pocket and as long as along with uh, uh some other stuff and then they have in in the bag i have uh uh, a Bluetooth uh, pill speaker. I'll show you that. Actually, get that out. It's easy to do. There you go. Yeah, blue, Bluetooth pill speaker. What else do I have? Because it's large, it's large enough to fit a laptop in there. I have a mouse. This is the mouse in here. And I have. A battery pack that's what I have in here right now because uh, that's all I need to have right now and then in the front pocket here there's a whole front section here this is, sort of, this is going to sort of be what's in my bag and right now I have the primary tablet that I'm using outside tether it to my phone uh, so the phone acts as a hotspot and I have a nice 4G internet very fast very efficient and I can do all my work out here. So, in other words, with this with this tiny little bag that can be easily carried around, I have my entire office outside with me. Now, am I fully on schedule the way I said? You know, it's a lot like middle school. You know, you start in mid-August. You, uh, you know, start to figure out what you're going to be doing in school. Uh, in that time, and usually by mid-September, you're uh, all squared away. Well, not quite. <laughs> the schedule is a little more complex than I expected it to be, and this is the way it always is. You, you expect things to be, in some ways, easier uh, than the reality. In other words, your expectations uh, often fail in comparison to what the real experience is. And anyways, this is why you actually have to get out and actually do the research. You can't just sort of sit there and say, well, I think it's going to be uh, rather easy, and I think it's going to go this way, and I think it's going to go that way, and blah, blah, blah. And you give all these particular reasons for it. You sit down, you put out a whole mathematical formula on why you think it's going to go the way you say it's going to go. And you get out there, and the mathematics doesn't match. Yeah. That's, and that's, this is what the reality is, is the, the, the mathematics that they put forward, you know, think about all the mathematics, all the research that went into uh, the weather models, right? Doing the weather forecast, everything, all that's based on mathematics. Somebody did all that research in their lounge chair, well, in their chairs, in their, <laughs> their offices, in their desks. They spent all that time doing the research, they spent all that time doing the mathematics, the computer science, 
And the result is... Uh, not quite. You're missing, your model's missing a few things. And the thing is, it's off, not only on a week, I would say easy, easily on a weekly basis, but in many cases it's off on a daily basis. They tell, well, there's going to be a 50% chance of rain, or a 50%, well, 50%, you might as well go outside and flip a coin. Right? That's, 50% is, is what a coin flip is. And you spent <laughs> how much <laughs> and how many years building this mathematical model of the weather? I mean, this is, this is the same thing that actually happened when they worked on the model of the universe, right? They try to c c do a model of the universe, and they, their basic assumption was, well, the most complicated model is the model of a, uh, a galaxy. So they sit down, let's do the model of the galaxy. Yeah, we've got now fast computers, we've got uh, ways of sort of seeing the graphics and everything, and let's do the mathematics for this, and let's, uh, let's the mathematics show us what we see. Well, they were kind of, well... Not kind of, but they were disappointed because it didn't turn out the way they they thought it was going to be. So let's fudge our numbers, right? So they started creating mass, right? Because it wasn't holding it together properly. The the universe that they had wasn't holding it together. It wasn't what they saw through the telescope. So they said, okay, let's add some mass to our equation, right? Because and I think it's because mass has a a, a a relationship with energy. E equals mc squared, right? E energy equals mass at the, at the speed of light squared, right? That's, so that's the equation there. So there's a relationship between uh, matter and energy, mass and energy. We know this in physics, that this is what even, even Newton understood there's a relationship between energy and, and mass, because this is why you have in classical mechanics the conservation of energy, conservation of mass. And this is why they're kind of intertwined, and if you go forward and you study rel relativity, this is Einstein's work, you'll find that uh, you do indeed have a relationship anyways uh, between matter and energy. This is what he found. This is when he worked on uh, 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 basically Planck's experiment, the light experiment. And found, uh, Planck found that you, yeah, you do indeed have uh, something in light that, that behaves as a particle. And Einstein went forward and continued on that work, the work that Planck did, and produced the... Uh, uh, the the model that the, the the photon is both a wave and a particle at the exact same time. In other words, it's got energy and it's got mass at the exact same time. So this is the relationship that you have here. And this is why you have E equals mc squared. You know, and that's sort of the Einstein equation. So they put everything together, and it didn't come out right. And so they put it, they said, well, okay, let's add some matter, that's, that's a mass, and, that's, and of course because you have to add mass, you have to add energy as well, and they were, did a bit more, a bit, a bit more, a bit more, and it didn't work as they continued adding more, until they added, the, and this is sort of the relationship, 95% of the equation was this unknown, undefined mass. In other words, they had to add, uh, the part of the equation that they knew, that they created, the known part of the equation, was now 5%, and the unknown was 95%. And they termed that dark energy and dark matter. And I think it's not, they now feel that 90% uh, of the universe is made out of dark energy and dark matter, and that only 5% is what they see. In other words, their understanding, and this is what I'm talking about being in middle school, <laughs> you can come out with those grand ideas and think, oh man, yeah, I'm really intelligent. And, and then as you push forward, it's like, oh God. <laughs> and they actually have to use these terms because there's no other explanation for what's going on here. Is that I thought I knew everything, and well, now I, I think it's like now 5% of what, that's what I know is 95% like, is unknown. And of course, of course, the atheists who will take this five percent. Yeah, on five percent, we know God doesn't exist. <laughs> and that's the, I mean, you know, really, on five on five percent knowledge of the universe. This is assuming you have the entire knowledge of that five percent that's visible. On five percent, you're willing to say, ah, there's no God. That's that's what you're willing to work with. I mean. <laughs> That's kind of a leap. It's kind of going on. A, there's a lot of faith there. You know, I guess they really, this is what their belief is. This is what their religion is. There's no God, so. 
it's good to be a religious person, you know, even if they, they don't believe in a God, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it is, it is kind of funny because this is what happens. This is, if, if, and the thing is, if you're going into science expecting to have this absolute knowledge to become this guru, I'm sorry, but it's not going to happen. Because the more you do your exploration, the more you push the boundaries of what you know, the, real, the realization is you don't know much. And it stays that way. It doesn't, it, it doesn't change. It's like, well, when do you get to the end of your... You don't. You don't get to the end. You never get to the end. That's what an asymptotic curve is all about. An asymptotic curve means that you, there's a point out there that you're going towards, but you never reach it. It doesn't matter how long you work on it, or how hard you work on it, you never reach that asymptotic point. This is the whole fundamentals of calculus and the limit. Limits are based on this asymptotic curve, that you can never, ever reach that asymptotic point. And the thing is, this is the way knowledge has worked out to be within science, within physics, particularly if you're going from the physics aspect, of it, you're actually going out towards the edge of things. There, there are things you don't understand. I mean, there's none of our things. There is a lot that you don't understand. And every time you start putting your boundaries forward, it's not as if, oh yeah, things are coming together now, and yeah, near the end. No. What happens, you, you narrow things down, you put things together, you open the door, so you, feel like, you think you're finished, because you're finishing one section, you think, oh yeah, you're near the end. And there's another hallway, there's another door, you know, twice as far away that you have to work your way towards. You know, it's like, oh, God. <laughs> and and this, this is the way it is. This is why, you know, it's 1.32 o'clock in the morning. I'm outside doing observation. Why? Because not everything matches up with the satellites. So you're watching the stuff. You're watching what's coming in from the satellites. And not everything matches up. So you need to go on to go, why doesn't it match up? What's actually happening out there? And the thing is, the satellites give you a view uh, and th th particularly at night like this, this is where the interesting part is. The day is, 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 is somewhat better because you can actually see the clouds because they're visible. At nighttime, you have to use the infrared sensors. And the infrared sensors will tell you where some of the clouds are, but not all the clouds, because not all the clouds give off. Well, they do to a certain degree, but this is, this is the problem here. Not all the clouds give off the IR radi radiation that you would expect them to give off. So in other words, at different frequencies of IR, uh, infrared radiation, you get different results. And this is actually what you see is they have uh, from the GOES satellite, from the, uh, uh, the observatories in space that they use to watch the weather. This is from NOAA. Uh, that's the National Oce Oceanographic and Atmospheric uh, Administration. You, they have their satellites on there. You go on there. Say, oh, yeah, no, yeah. I want to see what's on the satellites. To find out that there are I think there's more than 20 different types of views that you can get off the satellite, and there's even more, once you start getting into it, there's even more information there. And it's kind of like something you thought was initially going to be simple becomes a lot more complex. But anyways, they decided on four different IR channels, the four IR channels. And initially you start off with one, then you start off with another one, and you go through the four, and, and as you're doing your observation, you're trying to say, okay, well, which one kind of matches up? Because if you're not going to get an exact match, you want to get the closest, pro closest approximation. That's your goal. And sometimes you get a good thing, and sometimes you get it right, and sometimes you get it wrong, and, you know, there's a whole b bunch of other stuff in between that, that, that sort of, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, complicates things. And so that as you move along, trying to sort of match these things up, and I have actually a combination that seems to work. Uh, then when you start beginning to understand, okay, this is what this is, this is what that is. In other words, you begin to begin, begin to put the different pieces into place. And the thing is, even if you have put some of the pieces into place, there's so much more to see, there's so much more to, to go, and you become aware of this, that it feels like as far as you've come, You've only just begun, and you never get the feeling of success. And this, but the thing is, if if you're a scientist and you want to go into exploration, you want to go into so the so this thing where you, you're exploring these outer bounds. Well, this is what you're going to expect. You're you're never going to become comfortable with things. But the thing is, the, what scientist, what type of scientist do you want to be? Do you want to be a scientist who works on something that's known and just sort of stick within 
uh, what's accepted in the sort of the academic view, or do you want to be an explorer and get out there and really push the boundaries, be on the bleeding edge of science? It really depends. It really depends on where you, what what your uh, what what your desire is. Is where where do you want to be as a scientist? If that's the thing, is you want to be a scientist, then. Uh, my thing, my thought is, is that this is my nine to five. This is uh, my life, and uh, I enjoy being out on that edge. But again, it's not for everybody. It's really, just you know, this is something you have to decide. Because, you know, look at me. I'm not. I'm not twelve years old. Do I look twelve? Right or younger? But my life is the same. My, the way. What I know in terms of the total amount of of what there is to know is the same. The feelings of understanding there's so much further, so much more for me to know, uh, is the same. And that's what you know. It, 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 this is what brings you back to uh, as as an explorer like this. This is what brings you back towards middle school. And this is why it is like because the law, the feelings are there. And the thing is, is that. As I said, no matter how far you push, no matter how, how much, how far you go, you never get outside of that uh, that uh, middle school feeling because just you know <laughs> you got the equation of the universe. Things are starting to work because hey, you put this extra mass in there and to realize that the mass, the amount of mass you actually put in is ninety five percent, and what you actually know is five percent. In other words, you have another ninety five percent more to go, and they've built this five percent, this five percent that they have gotten. Has taken more than 200 years to put together. It's 200 years of collective knowledge and more. So the question, you know, that, that's what I was saying: is where do you want to be in life? If, if if exploration is your exciting thing, that's the thing you want to do, then this is great. But if it's not your thing, if you want something more certain or you know more specific, then then this is not the thing for you to do. It just it really depends on what you want and, and how you expect to live your life. And for me, this is fine. I'm fine not knowing what's going to be ahead in the next few months or the next few hours or the next few days. Or you know, this uncertainty is fine with me. I'm used to it. But it's not for a lot of people. Other people want some more certainty, and they so they go out and get regular nine to five jobs. A C nine to five, not for me. <laughs> this is my office here. This is my nine to five. I'm happy with what I got, and so. Anyways, uh, that's that. Uh, I do have some more work to do inside. But this is sort of the end of the night. Uh, I'm not finishing any, any earlier than I think seven o'clock in the morning. That's my f finish time. So not now. I'm gonna go in, have something to eat, and then uh, see what what what's on the schedule next to be done. Alrighty, take it easy. Well, hello everybody. Uh, Welcome back to the next segment of the Big Bang Theory House BTS vlog. We are just about finishing up um, doing observations tonight. Not much really happened. So, anyways, it is uh, just about one hour and twenty minutes into the day of uh, Tuesday, September twentieth, two thousand sixteen. Uh, we had a couple mishaps. We were, so, so, there were some issues with the computer that I had with with one of the net one of the systems in the network wasn't working properly it kind of quit out it quit on me so I had to pull it put, put, put a new system back on the system there I always have reserve systems I always have reserve computers so I put a new system back into the network configured it and so uh, we're a little bit behind schedule in terms of our editing but oh, 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 excuse me I hope to catch up uh, tonight actually so I was going to vlog earlier, and it was just going to be sort of been um, vlogging at around 11:30 at, uh, on 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 the 19th. It's 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 a bizarre when you're waking up at uh, well, you're going to bed at seven o'clock in the morning, and you're waking up around noon uh, to two o'clock in the afternoon. It, it's it's a bizarre feeling because it you feel like you're, you're living the day twice because you go to bed that day and then you get up that day for the next day you know uh, and it kind of messes with the mind in terms of how the, the the mind sort of accounts for the day and it as I said it, it kind of it has this sort of disorienting effect so 
Uh, but the thing is, is I am chugging along. Things are working out all right. Uh, what is supposed to be out here? Uh, for longer tonight, but not much is going to happen. I was when I came out around ten o'clock. I was watching two systems. Uh, one from the east. Oh, I went, well, one from the west. One from the east. Uh, the one from the west was from the northwest. Was coming down from Alaska, and it was it, it was not really no. This wasn't was coming. There is a system coming in for Alaska, but the one I was watching was basically a vortex that's above Ontario, and a section of the vortex had swung down. And it was sort of all the way down to Lake Erie, and it was sort of like a like an arm swing with a pendulum like this. There was another system coming up the east coast that was coming up like this. But as the night progressed, at just about uh, 11, 30, 12 o'clock, the systems kind of split where instead of this instead of this hand swinging up like the way it was supposed to, because the, the, these things are going like this. At 10 o'clock, when I took the data measurements, went to the satellite, the systems were going like this, and they were going to collide. At midnight, because nothing had shown up, I gone in, took a look at the, uh, what the data said, brought, the, brought some more images down from the NOAA satellites, and this system here had split, throwing uh, 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 a system down to the south, and this system that was supposed to be coming up like this just started going like that. It went back out east instead of going swinging further west. It just kept going. It went further uh, out to the northeast. So, uh, no, no real effect tonight. Nothing to see. There, there are high layer, high layer clouds. Uh, how do I know if there's high layer clouds? Up, oh, you look at the stars. If stars have an odd twinkling where the stars start jumping around a lot, uh, then you have high layer clouds. And this is what I saw is that uh, as the systems uh, were trying to collide, humidity went up and uh, it, it produced a, uh, a, a, a layer of high, a, a sort of a high layer clouds. Uh, which is probably, well, most cloud, clouds primarily are moisture, let's put it this way, they, they are water vapor to some degree at some different levels. And this is what sort of shows up on, on uh, the satellite system, particularly if you're looking at the infrared. And most of the regions that I'm working on right now, because I am working out at night here, you can't see anything visi visible. I am working more with the inf infrared, and uh, the information in the infrared is actually quite amazing. It's, it's, it, there's more content there than I can sort of swallow all at once. Uh, so I'm going through it bit by bit and getting my sort of my, 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 my not necessarily my feet wet, but sort of getting accustomed or acclimatized to. Uh, the amount of data is simply there and sort of seeing and fiddling around with what's what uh, and as I go along the understanding develops with that so uh, and this is this is this is how uh, exploration research is done you go into an area you you, you don't want to predict what's going to happen you don't want to uh, prejudice or bias the results with your own particular opinions you want to let the data tell you uh, what you're actually seeing or what you're not seeing and this is sort of the way it, you know, this is the way it, it does, the it, 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 way it works, actually. And it does take a bit of time. You have to take your notes. Uh, once you've got enough notes, you sit down, you have to sit down and start organizing your notes. Uh, so I think that's where we are right now. We are doing, um, I have the first set of notes already done uh, for the observational project. I'm now starting to organize my notes better. Uh, I renamed some, uh, I readjusted how I, uh, rename some of my data files uh, to better reflect uh, what was actually what's actually going on. So, uh, bit by bit, moving forward, uh, I had that problem with the edit with the editing systems last night. So, I have to catch up on the editing tonight. Tonight, so uh, we'll see where we are tomorrow. Uh, I'll give you an update in terms of you know whether we're back on schedule with our with our uploads or we're still further behind. Anyways, I'm going to see you in the next segment. I'm going to leave it short here for now. And next segment, of, I'll see you in the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory, I'll BTS Log. All right, take it easy.
Welcome. Welcome to the library. And I am a librarian. I am the professor. And professor of what? Professor of physics. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light? Free speech rules here at Democratic Earth.